So yeah, so I'm Vishwajit uh, Khara. I'm a graduate student at the Mechanical Engineering Depart Department in Iowa State University. And this work uh, was uh, um, in collaboration with uh, uh, my colleague uh, Kumar Saurav and Robert Daija, and also Melinda Fernando, who just spoke uh, before me. Uh, so in this talk, again, I will be talking about parallel space-time solution strategy, in, uh, specifically in the context of finite element method. And my uh, <clears throat> the outline would be basically to introduce the problem. I mean, we have seen uh, three talks, and most of them actually have uh, introduced the problem very well. Um, so I'll just uh, run through it quickly. And then I will go step by step by um, starting from the heat equation, and then and, and then the advection diffusion equation, which is the most basic of uh, the most simple model of the, of the flow problem. And then moving on to Navier-Stokes equation, and then I'll conclude. So to introduce, so once again, uh, solving PD is in full space time without any marching algorithm, just like any of the talks before. So on the left, we have the sequential time stepping method where if you have a 2D domain, you discretize it in time uh, using some time marching algorithm and then solve at each time levels and uh, uh, construct a solution. In space time, you, uh, you consider that time, time as another dimension and uh, discretize the full space and time. Uh, with whatever method you are using, it can be finite difference, it can be finite uh, element. Uh, the same scheme applied to the space as well as time. So this is rooted in the space-time domain decomposition methods. And, uh, and this method or the approach has been more popular in regarding in the, in, the, in the context of parallel computing. So this is a picture that uh, I have taken from the classic paper by Van de Waal. And he, he very nicely <clears throat> illustrates the different uh, decomposition methods. The, the left, leftmost one is, of course, the time-stepping method, where each of the slices are um, at one time step, uh, at one time slice, and you decompose the spatial dimension into multiple uh, multiple divisions or something like that. Uh, and maybe in parallel uh, computing setting, different processors uh, compute on each of those domains. Then the middle one is the spatial only spatial decomposition. This is a, an example of the waveform relaxation method, where each processor works only on a special uh, on, on a assigned part of the domain throughout the whole time but there is no decomposition in time and then you have the full space time decomposition where uh, you, your different processors uh, are assigned uh, chunks that are also uh, that, that are decomposed uh, some portion of the space as well as some portion of the of the time uh, discretization so so that, that's one thing. And then we have the advantage of space-time local refinement. Uh, this is a picture that um, my colleague Melinda also showed in his talk, uh, where this is an example of a um, uh, of the Allen Kahn equation with an ice block uh, in equilibrium with water, but I, the ice is melting. So in the below, you have a larger chunk of ice, and the yellow part is water, and then ice is melting. So the, the volume of ice decreasing. So the, the method, uh, the equation, Allen Kahn equation, tracks the interface between the ice and water. And you need uh, a lot of refinement into those, uh, those uh, interfaces. So with space-time uh, approach, you can easily track those refinements. And uh, there are many other problems that can be dealt like this. Uh, so with that, let's start with the heat equation, just a small introduction. So heat equation, you have the time derivative and the diffusion term, and kappa is the diffusivity. And on the right-hand side, you have some force. And uh, the most important thing is your initial condition <clears throat> uh, that you provide. And in space-time methods, that the initial condition basically goes with as a boundary condition of the initial uh, boundary. So the most common approach for this would be, uh, if you are solving in finite element method, would be the continuous Galerkin method, where you you uh, you approximate your solution in space through uh, continuous uh, uh, functions or continuous polynomials. So most most popular space is the H1 space, where you have the derivatives 
uh, integrable uh, piecewise uh, or derivatives are piecewise <coughs> uh, constant is, and so you have the continuous scalar kin method but in in time you uh, you discretize it with finite difference and uh, the way you do it is you used some of the algorithms like backward Euler or Frank Nicholson or uh, backward difference formulas or something like that and you write the continuous version of the Galerkin problem with the time derivatives uh, already discretized. So in this equation below, I have discretized the heat equation by uh, backward Euler algorithm, but uh, and and cast it in Galerkin method. So W is my test function uh, or the weighting function, and the time derivative, as you see, it is no longer uh, the continuous uh, u the derivative of time. It is discretized. It is it is already discretized using the uh, finite difference method. And then uh, you have the um, the uh, diffusion term. This is this is still uh, not discretized yet. Uh, and depending on what finite element uh, space you choose, that that will define the discretization in this case. So with this uh, discretization uh, and assuming that you choose some um, polynomial uh, for the uh, continuous scalar king scheme, you will end up after you are done with the integration. So the uh, once again this. Uh, parenthesis here uh, is, in, is the inner product uh, over the full space time volume. So yeah, so uh, once you are done with the integration and everything, you, you end up with a matrix like this, where M is the mass matrix, delta T is a time step, and U N minus one is the previous time step. And the, U here, so everything, this is a matrix vector equation. So U N minus one is all the previous uh, values of U in the previous time step. And then you have the un, which is the, the unknown values at current time step, again mul multiplied by mass matrix. And then you have the stiffness matrix or that comes from the diffusion. And the uh, un and fn, basically fn is the, also the force at the current time step. And that will be repeated for each uh, time step, which is n goes from 1, 2, and then you uh, carry on with that up to the final time. So if you stack all those equations uh, um, together, so before that, so generally what, what we do in space-time, uh, the most normal continuous scalar in finite difference in time cases, of course, we solve this equation time step by time step. But uh, to do that in space-time, and this is the most uh, very simple illustration for the space-time method is that you stack all those equations together and create a, another very big matrix which contains uh, those small uh, M and K matrices. And you end up with the matrix below, which is a block lower triangular matrix. And you end up with all the unknowns of the space-time uh, domain. So U naught is all the unknowns at the um, t equal to zero, which is known to us actually, which is not an unknown. And then you want to UN is basically your unknowns. And you solve this matrix and that's the most simplest version of the uh, space-time method. Now to do that uh, in finite element fully, uh, uh, so there you, so we want to eliminate the finite difference in time approach. So basically what you do is you uh, approximate the uh, U in space as well as in time in finite element method. And then, so that's basically your continuous scalar in space and time period. So the variational problem would be to write them, write it in mathematical term is very easy in the sense that you have your function spaces, which is nothing but your solution belongs to H1 space, which basically means that you uh, have your um, first weak derivatives available to you and the test function from the same space. And you define your finite element problem as uh, uh, the test function multiplied by the uh, time derivative as well as the uh, diffusion term. So now the only thing that has changed here is the time derivative term, which is not discretized in finite difference anymore. And it will be approximated using the polynomials of finite element uh, uh, setting. Now this works well with the um, heat equation, but then for to model flow problem, you, uh, you need to, um, so the next step is basically adding advection term, which is, the, or, or the convection term. And when we do that, and then the equation basically uh, turns into this, the only change is, of course, the B, so the middle term, B is our advection vector, which is um, or the convection velocity, and that um, dotted with the gradient term. And the rest of the things, you still have the initial condition, uh, you know, and then U equal to UD, which is the, on the Dirichlet boundary. And if there is any Neumann condition, it can be applied here. 
so but this this problem has is is very no, known in the finite element method to uh, cause problems in the sense that when your diffusivity gets very small you end up with oscillations so simple galerkin method uh, um, doesn't work very well uh, with this equation when your diffusivity is very uh, negligible or, or very small compared to the advection and you end up with spurious oscillations like this whereas you can see that i i have taken this image from a paper uh, uh, and you can see that the, the exact exact solution uh, would be something like the black line, which is a smooth line. Uh, but if you solve simply with the, sim the, the, the simple Galerkin method, you end up with oscillations throughout the whole domain. And I mean, those oscillations will be bounded. They are not unbounded and uh, they will always be bounded, but you will have oscillations not even near the boundary. It will be throughout the whole boundary, th the whole domain. And then the way to solve this is uh, using uh, some petro galerkin kind of approach, which is uh, also known as the stabilizing methods, uh, where you change the basis function, the original weight function uh, here. So here, the original weight function is Vh. Uh, the, the way um, the petro galerkin methods are constructed are you perturb those basis functions to something else. And some of the uh, most common approach are Galerkin least square. So I, I've summarized the issues here. So we run into problems when kappa gets very small and the solutions can be bounded, but oscillations throughout the domain. And the natural idea is then to turn to stabilization methods, which are some of the um, more well-known some stabilization methods would be Galerkin least squares and the variational multiscale methods. So the subsequent part of the talk, uh, I have applied uh, Galerkin's least square because that's a very simple method uh, to the um, advection diffusion equation and then the variation multi-scale to the navier stokes equation. So again, the same equation, uh, we had uh, identified the advection in uh, the time derivative as a advection in time and construct our derivative operators, which is uh, taking care of the time derivative as well. And I think I got, uh, so there will be at most uh, four um, uh, dimensions here um, this is, uh, so A is the generalized diffusion matrix, which will have the kappa and you don't have any diffusion in time. And B is the generalized advection vector. One is the advection with respect to time. So Galerkin least square method, uh, as I mentioned that uh, you have, th there are two components to it. Originally you have this simple weight function, LU minus F is the full equation, but now you add some perturbation to it and tau is the stabilization parameter and LV is the same operator um, op op operating on the test function and you have the full equation there. So the equation um, changes slightly from the original problem, but you have stability in the operator and you don't end up with oscillations like this, like, like I showed before. And, and also applying a stabilization method naturally introduces some elliptic regular, regularization in time dimension, which basically means although there is no originally no diffusion in time, there will be some amount of diffusion uh, in time, uh, but uh, a, a, any, any numerical method will um, have that, uh, with that and our uh, goal would be to reduce or, or keep it to minimum. So convergence so with that method, uh, mm, um, running with running the problem with the uh, known solution, analytical solution, and we see an order of two uh, decrease in error. Uh, so the red one is the error. Actually, I I am not talking about error estimator right now, but uh, I, I forgot to remove that. But yeah, the error estimator also. This is a simple residual based uh, error estimator that also uh, behaves the same way as the error. So which is a pretty good indicator actually. But this is a simple problem. Uh, so again, a uh, simple example for this uh, method. So this is a uh, Gaussian hill rotating uh, in, a, in a rotating field. So you start with an initial condition, which is a hill like this, and then it, it rotates in the domain counterclockwise. And then uh, in the space-time uh, domain, you, the, your solution looks like this. It seems like a helical, uh, helical path. And if I come, uh, on the right, I have compared the solution at the time um, t equal to one. Uh, the space time you can see it in the red and the blue one is the Clank Nicholson method. You can see that the um, Clank Nicholson method, there is a 
there is an amount of dispersion uh, involved because uh, Strang Nicholson method introduces uh, a third order derivatives in the modified equation and you have a dispersion coming into it. Whereas in if you are approximating the equations with linear basis functions, your modified equation will have fourth order derivatives. So there is no diffusion there, uh, dispersion there. Uh, there is a slight amount of diffusion, but since it is fourth order and very small, but with longer time, they will be prominent. So now moving on to Navier-Stokes equation, uh, all, of our, all of us are familiar with this. Uh, the only thing is my non-dimensionalization is that the diffusion coefficient, I was def uh, defining it with uh, kappa before, but now uh, he, in this equation it is uh, called mu, and that's basically one over the Reynolds number. Um, so we know that all of the um, uh, advection type equations will need a stabilization and advection diffusion term equation, we uh, saw that with Galatin least square. A more advanced uh, or a more sophisticated uh, stabilization method would be the variation multiscale formulation, where you uh, decompose your velocity or pressure fields into two uh, scales. One is the coarse scale and the fine scale. Coarse scale are the ones that you actually solve for uh, and that you represent through your mesh. And the fine scales are the ones that are subgrid um, uh, scales. So they, they, they are not represented, they cannot be represented by the mesh that you are using. So something that are smaller in feature, uh, smaller in size than the mesh you're using. So you cannot directly uh, solve for them. So we um, model the effect of them through uh, uh, the residual of the function. So I'm not going uh, into the detail of it. So ultimately what we do is we, we represent the uh, fine scale of, um, through the residual of the equation with the stabilization parameter, both for the velocity and the uh, pressure. And when you uh, do that, uh, let me just, uh, yeah, when you do that, so the, your original equation changes. So the first line is the original uh, Galerkin method, uh, the equation for the Galerkin method. And then the rest of the terms are the stabilization terms coming out of, uh, because you are using the VMS stabilization there. So all of those uh, fine scales are replaced by the residual. So all the terms that I have uh, written as res, res um, of ui, so that basically res ui basically means the residual of the Navier-Stokes equation equation which is uh, defined here on the, on the second last line right this one uh, so 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 yeah so you are actually solving a modified equation a separate a different equation than the um, original equation but when you refine your mesh very much uh, all these stabilization terms will, uh, should go to uh, uh, zero uh, and and you end up with the uh, original so in, uh, this is a consistent method so the first R I M that is for the momentum equation and R I R C is the continuity equation, which is also uh, basically the CSPG equivalent st stabilization. The stabilization parameters, uh, mm, the stabilization parameters are calculated uh, as uh, mm, the, the, almost a similar way as uh, Galerkin uh, least square method. But now, with the, so it has three components here. Uh, tau equal to the first term is uh, the C square that represents the, uh, if there is any reaction term. In my equations, there are no reaction term right now. Uh, and then you have, so, yeah, so, so oh, sorry. Mm, C is the uh, term that uh, represents the time discretization. Then uh, the second term uh, represents the reaction terms. Uh, then the third one is the advection, uh, the, the terms relates to the advection uh, velocities and the fourth one is basically your uh, terms that relates to the diffusion. And in, in, in time direction, there is no diffusion. So that's a, uh, it, it is something that is physical. So we can't, um, can't artificially add any diffusion to it. Uh, so you are limited by the um, amount of time that you can solve for. So, uh, so the time blocks that you choose, uh, they cannot be too large. So you are, you are uh, limited by your, uh, the, 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 no, the nonlinear solve. So this method works pretty good, uh, even without any diffusion in time introduced. 
but then of course the time uh, it has a sequential approach and if you have high gradients uh, uh, at some points or so your mesh cannot uh, approximate them at, at once in a very large block so that's something to uh, that we'll see after this so convergence test uh, on the left, you have linear basis function, and on the right, you have quadratic basis function. Uh, they work uh, as expected, with even with stabilization. Uh, I think these are for, for different Reynolds number. They all behave similarly. I have only plotted the error in the x velocity. So some numerical examples. Uh, the first one is the Dillon cavity, which is very common in uh, CFT uh, testing. Uh, and I have taken this image again from my website. So the domain is 2D and uh, on the top, uh, that's, that's kind of a lid and you are moving the uh, lid with a um, constant velocity one and, and all other uh, walls, the velocities are kept zero and the pressure is uh, specified at the bottom corner, bottom left corner uh, to zero value. And you solve, when you solve it, you generally uh, so, um, solve it with a large block like this and the, the the bottom boundary which is not visible from this angle has the initial condition applied to it and then uh, on the final boundary end up with the solution mm. now uh, so this is a full domain and uh, uh, once you do a domain decomposition approach in space time you end up with a decomposed domain like this this is just some uh, this is a small domain i uh, ran in my local machine but then this is the idea that um, you it's a, it's a fully parallel uh, uh, decomposed domain approach uh, with finite element method and and also there is a uh, the approach that you can solve it slab by slab uh, and this is the thing that i was talking about during the when i was talking about the stabilization that you in some problems you are uh, limited by the um, the time block or the size of time block that you can actually solve because this is a nonlinear problem and your nonlinear solve can have uh, difficulty if uh, there are fine features in the solution and you start with a guess that is not very close to it and you say that nonlinear solve can suffer. So in that case, the block sizes have to be reduced. A very large block cannot be uh, used. For this particular problem, this is a uh, little cavity, large blocks work very well. And I'm going to show some validations. Um, so these are plots uh, on the velocity contours on midlines. So on the left, it's a, a plot of the x velocity on a vertical midline. And uh, on the right, you have the x velocity, y velocity on a horizontal midline, uh, all plotted for Reynolds number 100, um, matches with uh, literature very well, even without, without any boundary refinement or uh, anything like that. Uh, same thing for um, Reynolds number 1000. Uh, the second one, uh, again, another valid validation problem for flow past the circular cylinder in two dimension. I forgot where the, I took the image from. This is the schematic just. And when you solve it in a, uh, so this is a uh, full domain and uh, the uh, length of time is uh, t uh, 60. And uh, where it, by, by, by that time you do, uh, observe uh, vortex shedding and, uh, and and the method actually captures the vortex shedding very well. It starts with a uh, trivial zero solution on the left. So this is a plot against uh, time on the on the z-axis which is increasing rightward that is in the time direction and it starts with a trivial solution and it does capture the full uh, vortex shedding features in a full uh, one block. Uh, just some um, for the same problem i plotted the drag and lift uh, these match very well uh, with other time stepping methods or uh, the literature and here i have plotted the so here i'm comparing with the with the literature value uh, the dragon two hall number values from literature and they match very well so this is kind of a uh, uh, starting for the um, now there's two equations in space time and these are all for 2D right now. And we will uh, we're still working on the 3D and that would be 4D space time block. 
So concluding uh, solving equations space time uh, can suffer from similar uh, spurious oscillations as the advection equation if you uh, go without stabilization. And both Kellerkin least going stabilization and uh, and VMS uh, stabilization uh, work very well in these two cases. Uh, the the solution with the linear basis function is very close to Knack Nicholson method as we saw in one of the slides. Uh, then for Navier Stokes, of course, VMS uh, is a natural stabilization scheme. Uh, uh, we could do that using a CPG uh, method as well. Uh, it's just that VMS is uh, more theoretically uh, sophisticated. And in, in a space-time method, the derivatives of the fine scale, and I'm talking specifically for uh, VMS method here, uh, the fine scale uh, derivatives with time, which is generally uh, neglected in a, uh, in a, a sequential uh, um, uh, setting, is you cannot, uh, neglect those in space time and it's it's actually adds to the stability of the problem and and i, I um, showed uh, common benchmark problems to show good agreement with the literature challenges uh, so again physically there is no diffusion in time but when you add stabilization in spatial directions uh, that and you end up adding some amount of diffusion in time as well and uh, but, but the same can be said about time stripping methods. So this is something that uh, cannot be totally eliminated. Uh, initial guess for nonlinear problems become very important because one of the thing uh, in, uh, in sequential uh, solutions is that you have the advantage of uh, initial condition. And uh, if you're solving nonlinear problems, you just so trying to solve everything at one shot can be very difficult at some point. So uh, one of the methods that I use is that, um, and it's a com commonly known approach is that you, you extrude the initial condition for the whole domain that alleviates the problem a little bit, but not to the full extent. So it, you are um, uh, limited by the, um, the, the, the size of the block sometimes. So uh, a very large block for a very complicated problem cannot be used all the time. So again, the same thing. Uh, stabilization for higher order basis functions, uh, it does work for quadratic, but um, it's not very it's, um, well studied or it's kind of um, heuristic for cubic basis functions. And as the number of degrees of freedom increases uh, and you end up in a 3D and solving in space time, the number of variables become huge and uh, traditional matrix based approach uh, do not work very well. and we need to go for matrix free uh, approach where free conditions can be a challenging uh, thing to develop for uh, in a matrix free approach. With that, I conclude my talk and thank you uh, all for your attention.